number 149. We're backing up rather than going forward today. <coughs> This goes along with part of our Sunday school lesson about the Lord being glorified in us, in my life. Keith one time, 
and he was a little, maybe about my age, maybe a little bit younger. And he was, what's that, what's that, what's that, what's that. So we were going through and I was trying to tell him about what everything was and this. And I was trying to be, you know, I had a laundry list of things that needed to be done. So this three-year-old or two-year-old was not really cooperating. We need to get on down the road, you know, not what is this, what's that, anyway. So I was trying to be very, very patient. Somebody put their head around and said, oh, what a neat mom. Oh, well, one of my times I was really neat. <laughs> you were having so much patience with this child. That the next time she was seen me, when he saw something that he wanted, and I had to drag him out of the store. <laughs> and have you ever had that happen, Lori? And I, they're pitching a fit because he was laying down in the floor. He, <laughs> I just grabbed him, I paid the lady, grabbed him by the arm, and out the door we were, screaming and hollering out the oh dear. And we've got a Christmas party to go to tonight. I thought, gee whippers. I went home and I told Kelly, I said, I'm not sure I'm going tonight. This kid has been, he said, well, we'll just have to stay home then. And I thought, well, no, that wouldn't be kind to the people that's having the party. We went, he found a rocking chair, and he had opened his mouth all night long. I thought, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know? <laughs> and you probably have multiple stories as well about your children misbehaving in public and or not behaving in public and then whatever. But you know, uh, pay time is really good when they grow up and their kids behave in those ways. Right? Right. All right, today we're going to Matthew chapter 6. <laughs> but as Christians, as Christians, how many celebrities on TV do you know that are not who they say they are to be in their private life? Think about that. Who, who are the people maybe who have come out in their, in their dealings? Or we find them guilty of so many things. Politicians, they're not really authenticated. I like somebody that just tells the truth. If there's anybody out there that can tell the truth, you got my vote. That's all I want is the truth. But how do we know they're telling the truth? Because so many people lie all the time. We don't know. You know, it's so hard. Maybe, you know, we think they're telling the truth, and then six, seven, eight, ten months down, somebody. In this day and culture, you used to can hide a lot of things years ago because we didn't have the technology that we talked about a couple of Sundays ago. But now, you better be a clean bread person because they can dig up stuff from you when you were a baby. I mean, you know, they, they, it's all over there. And it's really sometimes very embarrassing. Remember the Pharisees that we're talking about. Jesus is continuing his Sermon on the Mount. The Pharisees of Jesus' day, um, and they were fair, you see. Uh, they had a strong commitment to the law, to the letter of the law. Uh, and so they had, uh, and they were trying to put, always put Jesus on the spot and, and call his hand on a lot of things. They were very traditional. They wanted the tradition of the, uh, the elders. They were very strong ritualistic. And there's nothing with any of this. It's just how we, the extreme that we go to it. And they were very legalistic. Very legalistic. So when we, when we look at those, they kept the law but they really missed the point with Christ coming into the thing. Uh, here we continue in Matthew 6, the, the, his laws, and he's starting the Jesus Sermon on the Mount. Uh, this is about serving God with the right motives. Why do you serve the Lord today? Because you think it's politically correct? It's acceptable? You think you might get to heaven by serving the Lord correctly? But it's a hard thing. And Jesus is going to tell us today. Um, it's very possible for people to do a lot of good things but still not have a really good heart. There are billionaires and millionaires who give away loads of money all the time. But they live in sin. So what's their motive? Tax evasion? <laughs> Get it off their taxes so they don't have to pay so much taxes? See, there's lots of motives. What's the true motive behind what it is that they do? So we must absolutely, do we do our good deeds to be shown to men? For people to applaud us and pat us on the back? Why do we do the things that we do? So when we look at this, in chapter 6, take heed that you do, that you do not do your charitable deeds before men. To be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound the trumpet, 
before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. They have their reward. Uh, I don't know if you're embarrassed about coming up and putting your tithes and offerings in the offering plate, because that's letting people know that you do tithes and offerings. When we took up the offering, people did not have to give. They don't have to give today. That's just that's not entirely up to you. It's between you and the Lord. So, you know, but the, um, but the ushers always knew who gave and who didn't give. They never knew how much, but, you know, when they passed the plate, they knew who put in and who didn't. If you would like to go back to that, please let me know, because we can have ushers to do that. We've just continued that practice, you know, up, up front. We've not, uh, because of the pandemic, we want people to feel very, very safe. But the scripture here is we're talking about, they, the Pharisees wanted their identity was tied to their religious practices. So they wanted to make sure, they wanted to make sure that they were knew that they were devoted to God. They wanted everybody to know that. And they would look down on other people if they did not do like they thought they should. And Jesus said, that, that's not, you're doing it for the wrong motives. Let's continue. Verse 3. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That means don't broadcast it. Don't let other people know what you're doing. That your charitable deeds may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. I know lots of people who do things here for the church. No one ever knows about it. I'll know. I know. Because they'll give me some money to say we do give this for so and so. There are other people who will hand other people money. We will never know. That means they don't want it on their tithes and offerings. You see, they'll, just give, they'll slip somebody something. You never know it. This is what the Lord is talking about here. That your charitable deed be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. He will give you the blessings that you deserve. Verse 5, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues. Oh, Father, hear me as I pray. Lord Jesus, and they lift up their voices. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with raising your hands when we pray. That's act of worship. That's an act of worship. There's a difference in wanting to be recognized. Uh, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, what is he telling us to do? Go into your room <coughs> when you have shut your door. Pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will re reward you openly. So our prayers are supposed to be private. Now, when the pastor asks us to all pray together, you know, we'll pray. <coughs> we'll pray together. You can pray outside, out loud. You can pray in your heart. Wh whatever. But this is talking about the earnest prayer. We love to come to the altar. That was phenomenal when uh, we talked about uh, Jay's mom last uh, Sunday evening, uh, afternoon, for her funeral. When we came to the altar, all the kids were talking about they were saved at the altar of Central Tabernacle Church. Sometimes maybe we don't come down to the altar enough. You know. Let's come down to the altar enough. You say, well, Kay, I really can't kneel. You don't have to kneel. You just stand there and pray. Sit on the front pew. Do we, do we neglect coming around the altar? That's the most sacred place in the world to me, is to come around our altar to pray. And so many churches don't have an altar today where you can really come and pray. And, and really come and pray. So he says, he tells us, how do you pray? How, he, this is how he wants, he wants us to pray. He wants us to pray. When he looks at us, and when you pray, verse 7, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Be very eloquent. My aunt was in a service one time, and her uh, husband's name was Brim. And the pastor kept saying, Lord, we thank you for Pastor Bass that's come in here today. I mean, he was being so eloquent, he didn't even know the man's name. He called him Bass rather than Brim. Now, that's, that's just, that can happen, you know, anywhere. You know, but it just got funny to my aunt. To my aunt. Uh, 
and everything. But when we look at things like this, how should we pray? How should we pray? He's going to give us the model of uh, a model prayer here. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of, even before you ask. So why in the world do we need to go to Him if He already knows what we need? Why don't He just doesn't He give it to us? Because He wants us to ask. Because He wants us to. He wants us to recognize our need. Mm -hmm. What do you have need of this morning? Not maybe not clothes, maybe not bread. Do you have need of patience, kindness, love, understanding, compassion? Those are the things that the Lord speaks to me about that I need in my life. I need to grow in this. I need to grow in grace and in knowledge. But I need to I need to go grow in these in these avenues. Go to verse sixteen. We're going to talk about prayer. Moreover, when you fast, we're going to come back to the other verses here, verses 9. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. My mother used to fast. We never knew when she was fasting. She'd prepare our meals, set it before us, go on about our business. And there's several fasts. There's a Daniel fast. There's a total fast. And we've had this. We've had lessons on fasting, and we did a whole series uh, on Wednesday night about fasting. So you fast. Some people are diabetics. They cannot do a total fast. But fast according to. You may want to fast. Um, uh, maybe your drinks, and just drink water rather than your uh, all your your diet drinks. Or maybe bread. You, you don't need uh, your, your, the bread. You can do partial fasts. But what he's telling us here, when you do fast, this is how you're supposed to do it. But when you fast, verse 17, anoint your head and wash your face. Cleanse yourself. Go in front of the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. So that you do not appear to me and to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Let's say for all Jesus, if we're uh, all of us who come in clean, maybe somebody's fasting that particular day. Well, no one has to say, well, I'm fasting today, so I can't have a snack. <laughs> right? Right. You just get your glass of water and sit down. We all chit-chat. We don't ask your uh, itinerary, you know. If you want to eat, that's fine. If you don't want to eat, that's okay too. You know, none of, none of our business. But you can be selective in your fast. And he's just telling you when you fast. So when he says when you fast, what does that mean? You need to fast, right? When you pray, not if you fast or if you pray. He says when you pray, when you fast. So these are the things that we need to have in our life. We need to do in our life. You want the blessings of the Lord? Follow the ordinances of the Bible. Follow what he has to say. Now, get out your Lord's Prayer. When we start here, he gave us the model prayer. And we, this prayer is so familiar to all of us. But I thought this was very, very interesting. Our, uh, if you don't have one, there should be one up there. If not, I'll get you one after uh, Sunday school. In this manner, therefore pray. So he's giving them a model prayer. Our Father in heaven. All right, let's look at our step. Step one. We want to establish our relationship with the Lord. We'll establish our relationship with the Lord. We want to acknowledge who He is. Acknowledge who He is. And show Him the proper respect. If your children talk to you like you talk to God, how would you respond? Do you want them to respect you? Not, hey, I need this. When am I we're going to the store so we can get this? No. You want them to give forth and say, Mom, Dad, you want respect to be shown. This is respectful. So we say, acknowledge who God is. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed, holy be your name. Sacred, reserve, uh, reverend, Respect the Lord for who He is. I think that's our problem in society today. We have no respect for anyone, for anything, especially in authority. There's no respect. 
there's no mistake. There's no kindness. We just assume this. It's going to be ours. We've got it. Whatever. We're going to keep it. And you're going to give it to me. Bottom line. So there's no respect. So we're to respect of the Lord. Step two. He says, focus. We're going to focus on the kingdom issues first. Thy kingdom come. We need to acknowledge that. Our kingdom is to come. Submission to God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Seek God's will. The song that we were trying to sing, Seek ye first. Seek God's will. I was talking with a young lady <coughs> yesterday, and we were talking about uh, which direction she wants her life to go into, and I said, What is the will of God for your life? God will show these young people their will. they got to start somewhere. They gotta start somewhere. They gotta go in an avenue, start somewhere. And then God will sometimes change the direction of their life. But they seek God first. What direction? Look at our Pastor Sandra. She's gone in multiple directions. She started out as a school teacher. She was called to be a, 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 a she, she remembers being called into the ministry at age eight. But she didn't become the pastor until mother passed away 27 years ago. But she was in training. See, she was in training. And we all need to be in training. Everything, I was telling this young person, every experience that you have leads you to be a, a, a better capable person of doing God's will. You never know when these situations or these um, uh, that you're going to encounter, you say, ooh, I'm glad I have that experience. Ooh, I'm glad I had that experience. Have you ever worked at a department store when you were growing up? I did. Are you kind to people now that standing behind the counter? Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. Do you say thank you and please and I thank you for your help? Absolutely. Because there's some rude people out there. They want what they want when they want it. And that's the bottom line. So respect for one another. So all your experiences, your past experiences, determines who you are today and how you're going to really serve the Lord. So God gives us all these insights and these abilities. So he says, seek God's will for your life and the world at large. Every young person, when they're going through high school, when they get out, when they're going through college, what do they want to do? The uh, first two years, the way it used to be, there's different ways to say that they've changed so much. When a child was going into college, they took generic courses. Then they determined their major. Now they can maybe declare a major early if they want, but there's still some general classes that they have to take. I, I even did that in, in, when I was in nursing. And so then that sometimes broadens your way. It opens up avenues. When you take these general courses, you can say, now that's definitely what I don't want to do. Do not want to be a math teacher. I, that's not my forte. You know. Now I might be a better communication person. Well, I could go into psychology. I could go in. It opens and it broadens your mind when you when you delve into all of these. Because sometimes it's hard. Some, there's some adults that still don't know what they want to do. You know, but they're still doing. They're still searching. They're still educating themselves. Pastor Sandra has been a student all the days of her life. She wanted more education, more education, more education. She went to Greensboro School to get a master's uh, in her after her BS. In, in teaching, then she went to uh, get a Master's of Divinity degree. She always wanted to learn, to learn. You're never too old to stop, learn, to stop learning, never. I've got a cousin that's 90 years old. He says, I try to learn something new every day. And believe you me, technology is changing every day, is it not? You learn it today, the bar is obsolete. So here we go. So he says, trust God to meet your most basic needs. Give us this day our daily bread. He's not talking about just food. Uh, uh, alone. He's talking about other avenues as well. Uh, it's, it's our submission to him. But he will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. When we seek him first, receive God's mercy and show mercy to others. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Have you ever gone to, uh, to pray to the Lord and there's something that you've done that's still in your brain and your prayer doesn't go through Wonder why that is. Yeah, praise God, we have, we, we've got to ask the Lord to forgive me. Mm -hmm. 
or we've got to go and ask the other person to forgive us before we can get forgiveness from God. It works both ways. Uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I just still love the story of Wayne and Melinda with their donuts. I think that's the most, that is the, one of the most valuable places. Have you always noticed at the grocery store they put all the good stuff at the checkout counter? Everywhere you go, every, they've got all these goodies right there, and especially for the kids, because they're at their level. You know, they can pick it right up, and you're trying to get out of the grocery store, so you say, yes, let's go, you know. We, most parents keep them in the buggy so they can't see those things. But even as adults, think about it. All the good little tidbits. So, lead us not into temptation. If something tempts you, don't go buy it. Don't go buy it. Don't go buy it, you know, pass by it, and then don't go buy it. Leave it alone. If you know that it's detrimental to your health, if it's detrimental to you as an individual, lead us not into temptation because the devil wants to sift us. He wants to sit, he wants to take us and separate us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ask God to show you the enemy's lies and give you strength to serve only him. You want to know if someone is, is false or real? Ask the Holy Spirit to let you know, and he will. He'll let you know. He'll let you know when someone's lying to you. He'll let you know when someone's lying, because you know the truth always comes to pass. The truth always comes to fruition. It, they'll, they'll either tell on themselves or they'll tell, it, it, somebody else will tell on them. You know, it, always. Thine is the kingdom. We're working for the kingdom. Thine is the kingdom. We recognize that we exist to bring glory and honor to God. That's our motivation down here. What can we do to bring glory to the Lord, to bring honor to God? And the power and the glory forever. Amen. Don't you love to hear someone sing the Lord's Prayer? For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That just seals it right there. So the Lord's Prayer, this is the model prayer. I love this diagram. I love this explanation of the Lord's Prayer. I thought it was so, uh, so valuable here with us, with us today. So when we look at that, so... How do your typical prayers start off? Then maybe this will, this will help you. Um, what are some specific things that you can think about that you could pray about that would expand the kingdom of God? We're trying our very best, we're trying our very best to get people to attend church. Not send children, but attend church. We do everything we can. And they sometimes they've got more excuses than Carter's got little liver bills. You know. And there's not anything we can do except just continue inviting them. Continue inviting them. All right, let's go back to uh, verse 19. Oh, let me go back and finish verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And someone said, well, I forgive them, but I haven't forgotten. Does that work? Does that work? Have we really forgiven them? Are we still remembering them? Thought. Food for thought. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. What's he telling us here? But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. What's a treasure in heaven? It's a soul that you won to the Lord. That's your treasures in heaven. A soul that you have won to the Lord. So are we, are we, are we bringing people to Christ? What impact do we have in other people's lives as the person that would make them want to serve the Lord? That's our key. We want, the, we want them to serve the Lord. These children that we have here, my heart's desire is that they will want to serve the Lord. If they never, ever remember uh, when, we, when we sat at the funeral, uh, Jay and his, and his brothers and his sisters talked about growing up in church. Did we leave a lasting impression on them? We hope so. We never know. We never know. When you pass somebody by in the store, did you leave a good fragrance of kindness and love? 
So we're laying up treasures in heaven. So this is the greed. We know that a lot of the greed dominates a lot of our society, does it not? Greed does. And it's hard. So we're not going to store up treasures here on earth. And, you know, when we start cleaning and we start changing seasons, we think, wow, boy, have I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff over the years. We, we, you know, we compile it. We, uh, it. It piles up sometimes. And we don't realize it. So we start changing the seasons and pulling down the Christmas and et cetera, et cetera, even here at, at the church and everything. So we want to manage our finances wisely. We want to manage our finances wisely. And what does he tell us here? But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh, I told you one time about the uh, man that died and uh, they... They were fairly well off, you know, but uh, he, he, he liked his money and he didn't like to share it too much. So when they were cleaning, they were packing up his stuff, you know, like to take to the Goodwill and give it away. Uh, a shoe dropped out of their hand. There was money in it. So they just started dropping all the shoes out. He'd stuff money everywhere so nobody could find it. Did he take it with him? No, he left it right there for them to argue over or what, do whatever they wanted to with it. You know, but what he's talking about here is that where our treasure is. Where's, your, where's our treasure? And he's talking to us about tithes and giving. If you want financial, if you want the Lord to bless you financially, start giving to God if you don't give. If you can only give a dollar, you put a dollar in an envelope and that's your tithe. And watch God bless. You cannot outgive God. And I can tell you over and over and over again, when you try, and people have told, when you try, don't work. Give what you can give to the Lord as an offering, as, as just a gift. Say, Lord, I really don't. And watch God multiply, and he will multiply. He, I mean, you know, don't go overboard if you can't afford it, but just do what you can do, and God and God will bless. Oh, I promise you God will bless. And I, you don't have to believe me. Believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. The lap, Verse 22, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. That means if, the whole, if you love the Lord all the way down, then everything's going to work out. But if your eye is bad, if one eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness, full of sin. He's talking about sin, and he's talking about salvation. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? It's minor. It's amazing when we come in here and I start turning on the lights. Little by little by little, all the lights come on. In the sanctuary. Just think about your house. When you walk in, I don't know whether you leave a light on or not. We do. So that when we come in, there's a light always burning in our, in our home. But look how the light is illuminated when we keep turning on all the lights. You want to illuminate someone's life this week with your light shining for the Lord. We, we pray for strength. We pray for wisdom. We pray for guidance in everything that we do. We want wisdom. We want praying. We want to be that individual that God wants us to be. We want to be that firm foundation. Uh, this is a better way to live. We want our life. You remember the virgins, the, the ten virgins, five had light and five didn't have their oil. So when it came time to go to the bridegroom, what happened? Some were saying, oh, I'll get it next time. There's so many people that are putting off salvation. And look in the newspaper. The deaths are not just for the elderly, the matured. A 47 year old passed away this week. There can be a 36 year old. There can be a teenager. One of the saddest funerals we had was a teenager. Pastor Sandra and I. A teenager. Vibrant team. He was, he was hit uh, by, uh, by a car. Uh, he was riding his bicycles. A child with cancer. You know, we've had those funerals too. One of the uh, saddest funerals was a child that age that was sick. No time to live. Look, even on Facebook, parents will post, pray for my child, pray for my child. They may be three, two, five, seven, eight. We, we never know. So how are we going to serve the Lord? So we look at this, our lights. 
No one can serve two masters. Verse 24. No one can serve two masters. Either he serves the Lord, either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, which is riches and wealth. Who do you serve today? Is it, the, is it the Lord or is it the devil? Well, okay. I'm sitting here in church. You know I'm not serving the devil. I don't know that. I'm not your judge. I'm just asking a question. What the Bible says. What does the Bible say? You can't serve. You can't be on the fence and be wishy-washy. You either got to be sold out to the Lord or you're sold out to the devil. You got to be one or the other. You got to be a pig or a pup. And you've told, I've told you that story before about the little boy taking, the man taking his, um, his uh, 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 pig to the store to sell it in a bag. Left it outside, went inside. These two little boys were out there and they just was just full of themselves. So they took the pig out put a puppy in there. The man comes out, opens up the bag. He said, what happened? I thought I brought the, the, the pig here. So he takes it back home. The next day, he does the same thing, brings the pig, and the boys do the same thing. He says, either be a pig or a pup, one or the other, because he didn't realize what they were doing to him. So you've either got to serve the Lord or you're serving the devil, one way or the other. So you have that, you have a decision uh, to make. you got to serve either uh, either God or, or, your, or your riches. Decisions, decisions. Go inside real quick. Oops. Here, this is for you. Decision. All right. Using the chart below, evaluate some of your decisions in the past week, month, and year. What's your decisions you've made? How did you decide to use your time, money, or other resources? What was the rationale for your decision? What were the results? All right. Let's say this past week, uh, let's just say to complete a project, Maybe you had one project you needed to complete. All right, what was the rationale behind it? To get the man stuff out of the way, right? And to put that project, I hate to have projects just sitting there, don't you? Forever and ever and ever, they just sit there and you think, no, I'm going to take care of that, and I'm going to take care of that, and I'm going to take care of that. And you just walk around it, you know, all the time. You walk around it. What was the result? Project completed. Then you don't have any stress factor, and you think, whew, now you can move that one out of the way, and you can go along. Oh, well, last, uh, last uh, Tuesday, we were here in the kitchen, and Judy kept saying, and uh, Melinda, now, you know, maybe January, we're, we're going to come in here, we're going to clean everything up. You know, we're going to do, you know, and I said, okay. And then something came, and Melinda said, you know what, this cabinet right here, said, yeah, I, we've got more lids than we've got containers. I said, well, why don't we just match them? She cleaned the cabinet. She said, you know, I feel better already. And Judy cleaned her cabinet because she's trying to put stuff up and she couldn't put stuff in because there was so much stuff in there. And I said, you know what? What's our better plan? Clean a cabinet a week. If it's messy, clean it one thing, one item a week. Because, you know, sometimes that's all we've got energy to do is clean one, do one project, right? So what did you learn? What about this past month? This past month that this church has rolled. I mean, look what all we have accomplished. You've accomplished in this past week, in this past month. Today is December the 10th. We've had Thanksgiving. We've had ladies' brunch. We've done food for the pastor. We've done funeral. And it keeps rolling. It's not stopping. We had chicken stew. I mean, look at all the things that we've, we've been busy at, we've accomplished. So, um, the same, what was your decision? What was the rationale behind that? Mine was to be able to enjoy my family for Thanksgiving, so I, I wanted to get all my projects out of the way for Thanksgiving, get all my cooking done, so I could sit down and enjoy it and talk with them. All right, the past year. What's your goal been this past year? I hope it's been... To study the Bible more. Study your Sunday school lesson more. Charlene gave you a real, real good insight. Take 15 minutes. Look up the scripture on the back. All of these scriptures go right. Look up one scripture on the back. Do one sheet. Study one part of your lesson. And then by the end of the week, 
have it all taken care of. Don't wait till Saturday night to study the lesson because it won't work. And then the lifetime. What's your lifetime goal? What's your decision? It should be to serve the Lord better every day. To be a better Christian every day. The rationale, seek you first. All right, let's go real quick. As always, I'm always running, running uh, behind. So using your money wisely, using your talents for the Lord. Using your talents for the Lord. Verse 25, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will put on. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Now we have to think about these things. We have to plan for them. You put out your clothes the night before for what you're going to wear the next day, especially with the children. So that will all be taken care of first thing in the morning and nobody has to uh, get all upset because you know, they can't find clothes or what and be late for the bus and all those good things. But he's talking about don't sit down and just worry, 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 worry about it all the time. Verse 26, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? He takes care of all of that. Now, sometimes you, do you throw breadcrumbs out to the birds? Do you, do you throw something out for the birds sometimes to come by and pick up? So you're helping the Father, but he's still providing for the birds, and they're not working, they're not sowing. He doesn't talk about don't go to work, you know, but as you're working, you know, the Lord will provide. Is anybody in here that your need has never been met by the Lord? Think about it. If it hasn't been met, then we need, we need to talk about what we need to do to get those needs met. Because he will take care of it. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubic to his stature? Have you ever heard somebody want to be taller? And they didn't help them, did it? They didn't grow any taller. This is what he's talking about. Uh, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They need the toil or spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, ye of little faith, there, God will make a way when there doesn't seem to be a way. There will be. There's a song we used to sing, and we have it playing. I need you to help us, gentlemen, please. Just a minute. I've got someone that'll come to help you. All right, let's look at the last verses here. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all of these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows what you have need of all these things. All right? Let's go to verse 33. Everybody, let's read this together. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When God is first in your life, you do what you know you need to do as a Christian. Then all these other things. Can everybody say amen? Can anybody amen. deny that? Is there anybody here that can deny that? You know, there's been times I couldn't give tithes. But guess what? Something broke down and I had to pay for it. And I thought, oh my soul. It didn't take me but one or twice, two times. To learn that lesson. Right, everybody? You, you've learned that lesson. You know, you, you've learned that. Lord said, give a pie away. Bake two pies. And I thought, well, I'll just keep on both here because I'm always giving a pie away. Guess what happened to that pie? It went sour. I had to throw it away. So when you live by God's rules, and I'm not putting myself on a pedestal by no means, I have just learned over time that God's ways are always the best ways. He's all. I want you to sing. There's a little song. We're going to sing it real quick. You know the little song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Okay. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Alternative. This is your page. Alternatives to work. Look up these scriptures that will give you ways to worry. Because you depend on God. 
He said, one, I saw the Lord from Psalm 34, 4. I saw the Lord and he hurt me and delivered me from all my fears. If you're having a horrible day, go into your bedroom or your closet and shut the door and get down on your knees, sit on the commode or whatever, and pray and ask the Lord to take away the stress. Take away the anxiety. Take away the fears. Yes. Um, the devil uses words. Yes. And, and most people worry about things that's never even going to happen. Right. And, and if you could just trust the Lord day by day by day, and, uh, and these scriptures, if you yes. seek Him and if you uh, uh, do the things, uh, trust in Him, yes. then uh, <coughs> you, you don't have to worry. But that's one thing the devil really uses. People worry about this, worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. Take it one day at a time. One day at a time. That's a good old song. One day at a time. On November the 19th, just real, real quickly, real quickly, <coughs> you had, you had a, a paper the, in the home touch. And I want, to, I want to talk to you just one second about this. I don't know how you read it, but it came so uh, into today's lesson. Because remember the two servants that got money? Uh, let's see. One got a 10, one got 5, and one got 1. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and the one person just sort of hid it. But the guy with the 10 and the 5, <clears throat> what the Lord wants us to do today is invest in the kingdom of God. How you invest in the kingdom of God. The third servant never invested in the kingdom of God. And he says, seek ye first. This is what he was talking about. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek God first. And his righteousness and then all these other things will be added unto you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Father, we thank you for this time together. Oh, we thank you for these powerful scriptures that you've given today. May we take them to heart. May we find time to spend alone with you in prayer, in fasting, in reading your word, studying your word. We want to be the best lamp that we can possibly be, the best light to this dark world. Help us, O oh Lord, I pray. Each one of us, let us uh, decide in our heart today, we're going to go forward with the Lord. Then all these other things, you'll take care of them, but we've got to seek you first. Bless the 11 o'clock uh, service, Father. Bless our pastor she brings forth the message. And as the choir sings, it will give you all praise and honor and glory. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.